Well, hello again, and um, welcome back to a very quick update. Um, you'll get fed up with me um, doing these little videos. <laughs> um, but I just thought I'd show you a little bit of progress um, because I'm delighted. It's only, it's only, it's only happened yesterday. And my apologies, I won't keep it on long because it's a very, I think the technical term or the old technical term is it's a jittery picture I've got. But I thought you might like to see, um, I'm well on the way to cracking the Pi um, FB um, at one uh, set from 1951. Uh, still a load of issues to sort out. I've still got this white um when you see that i've still got quite a defined white line down there the picture is jittering about um the uh, magnets that you slip around at the back to center the picture of i've got to take that part to bits and have a look at them very carefully because they're they're very rusted and they don't move very easily at the moment so i don't want to force them uh, so lots of issues but i'm delighted um, at last i've got some sort of picture up on the screen of the test card um, so it's looking better um, for me this hasn't been an easy set um, the last update vis uh, video that I posted um, probably only a, a day or so ago um, I should say that was mainly done in the autumn time I don't do a lot of vintage television work in the winter for me it's too cold the light isn't good so I've got a bit of a, it's a bit of a seasonal thing for me, and, it, and, and as I've explained before, you have to do these things when you want to do them, and when you really feel, you know, so I really want to go out and have a go at that television again, and, and um, so, you know, this last week or so, I've been inspired to get out here and have a go at it again. Uh, so yeah, you know, we've got picture, and um, I'm delighted with that. There's plenty there for me to um, carry on and work on and try and now sort some of these faults out. Um, the, the set, I don't know whether you'll see that, um, how well the camera will focus on that. Um, I don't know where I am even. Um, the set was absolutely packed full of these on the RF side, these little colour coded capacitors. Uh, I had several that went bang on me when I applied voltage um, because I tried to change them one at a time looking at the more critical ones first on the data but in the end I had to change virtually the whole lot on the RF um, side of the set and it was quite a job. Um, also there's a couple of things and I, I don't know what I've done with it, uh, I'll perhaps put it in my... Um, many there again on this set that's the bag of um resistors i've never known a set with so many um out of tolerance resistors either going high in resistance or very low or go, you know um so there was a load of resistors that um had gone um and had to be changed um i do wonder about my for those um, into televisions. I do wonder about my um, PL38 valve in there. Um, I did, I have got a Mullard high speed valve tester and in the end last autumn in desperation because I was having so many problems with it I did run all the valves apart from the PL38 um, all the EF um, 80s and that kind of thing I put them on the Mullard high speed tester and I'd got a lot, a lot of duff valves in the set, which wasn't doing me any favours. Um, but I still think I might invest in an, or try and find a better, I might have one if I dig deep um, in my collection. Um, but what I was looking for, and I, I can't find it, but, but never mind. Um, it might even be on the bench in all, in all the mess here. Um, uh, there's two things in this set. Uh, called metrosils and both slightly different in design both little red discs with two pronged electrical connections a bit like a capacitor um, and they're like little red discs and um, one had gone completely open circuit um, and so I've kind of 
work something out for that and it seems to be working at the moment i've left the other one in but i have my doubts whether that is any good so that's probably something i should look at um obviously in 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 you know when i next take the chassis out and um have a look strangely enough i found um, i have virtually all the practical televisions there again i I don't know how well you'll see this, but um, I have all the practical televisions dating right back from about the first copy right till about 1962. And they're great reference works if you're dealing with old televisions, you know, um, just to look at and see, to catch that period in time. And um, there was a very, very interesting article in the March of 1955 of um, service. They did it every month. They'd service a different set and uh, this one is servicing the Pi FV1 and it was quite interesting um, they drew attention even in 1955 to these metrosils that had been used in the set and um, strangely enough also the PL38 um, could be problematical linked in with other things on this set apparently so it was very interesting to read that article and um, I found that totally by chance. I was moving some um, old, you know, um, of these old practical televisions, and um, I thought, well, I'll just have a look through them. And and on the third or the fourth one, there it was. And uh, it's been very interesting to read that. Obviously, as you'll understand, the faults that you are finding in 1955 are probably a lot different that we're dealing with now because this set as I'm aware of, hadn't worked for probably 40, 45 years and had been in a, forgotten in a loft um, in a terraced house in Northampton. Um, it is a local Northampton set. It was bought again from Abel's, um, a lovely shop on the Market Square, which sadly was pulled down in the mid-1970s. And I think was one of the oldest it had established as a music shop, sold pianos, sheet music and musical instruments in, would you believe, 1794. It was one of the oldest music shops. And as the eras go on, it had branched into radios, televisions, gramophones, you know, first of all, uh, 78s and phonographs. And it had moved, it, had mo it was a shop that had very much moved with the times in Northampton. And they were the main pie dealers in Northampton, so a lot of people went and bought pie radios and pie televisions. So that's where this one came from. Um, so there you go. I just thought I'd show you this um, joyous news. Um, I've got a test card up on it. As I say, by no means it's not brilliant. My apologies for the Caddy Wampus picture, and you'll see it's moving about. It's going in and out a bit, and it's jittering about here at the top, something chronic. Um, but there's something to work. Once you've got a picture on the screen and you're you're putting the test card through, it's half the battle in my in my book because you've got something to work at, and you can then look at stages of the set to work out you know what faults you think you've got. Um, so that makes it a lot lot easier for mere amateurs like like myself. So there we go. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little series. Um, I will. This might be many weeks away because, you know, um, I've got a lot of things coming up that need to be done. So it might be a while before I get back to this set to have another go at it and really sort it out. But I will show you as a finale um, the, um, you know, set sorted out. Um, I'm not going to do anything to the cabinet. I, I gave it a nice polish yesterday um, as it as it started working reasonably uh, to, some, to some degree. I, I polished the cabinet and it's tatty and it needs a bit of work with the um, veneer on the um, this side here at the back there's some veneer that needs gluing back down again but I, I don't like over you know I don't I, I'm not a fan of over restoring things to me that's fine that's it's cleaned up it was it was black when I found it you'd never think it would come um, like that you know um, and um, I've had it many years and um, I kept it you never know whether these things have got woodworm after they've been in a loft, an old terraced house. So I, I kept it for a number of years in a black plastic bag, all tied up in, in the workshop here, um, just stacked up. And um, it has not appeared to have any sign of any, it gets hot in here in the summer. And obviously that brings the woodworm out, if there is any, 
and um, it isn't, there's not a hole in it on the base, top or any sides or anywhere. So um, uh, luckily it seems to have escaped that fate. Uh, there's many televisions, you, you see many televisions have been ravaged um, by woodworms, some of the wooden televisions. Um, I think it was probably the heat in the cabinet. They generate quite a lot of heat with the mains droppers and the valves. And I think um, they like the plywood. It was relatively soft. And obviously in these in the houses and cottages of that period, um, there was woodworm in the floors, in the joists, you know, in the roof. Um, so uh, sadly many televisions have succumbed to very bad woodworm I've seen. But there we go, I mustn't ramble on. Um, uh, so that's the Pi FV1, as I say, giving me sort of a little bit of a reasonable picture anyway. It's, it's not brilliant by a long way, it's got a lot. So um, thanks as always for watching. Um, I'll wrap this video up here for now. This was only a very short little video of um, just giving you a bit of a demo of, of a picture on the set at last. And um, thanks everyone for subscribing and then um, commenting and liking and um, always lovely to hear from you that's great that's a great part of YouTube you know other people if you're not interested in this but it just brings back some memories for you and um, which has been in the comments already that's brilliant I, lo I love hearing about that because that's to me what all these telev old televisions and radios and any old um, thing really cars or anything um, is about you know it holds a lot of memories for many people and um, of, of times gone by and um, so thank you as always and um, I wish you a very happy Easter and um, catch up with you very soon again. And uh, bye for now anyway.